So why cut CT? Obviously, it would really help in the management of the patients. Thank you. So, So, yes, I would like to tell that the first thing the CT is the first remaining test in most of the cases. So, that should be the algorithm. However, PET CT is most accurate than CT alone because obviously in characterizing lesions difficult to biopsy. So you have a lesion which is very difficult, you don't know where to biopsy from. The patient is having a lot of necrotic tissue, you don't know where to take the biopsy from. You have the serum markers rising, you have the CA rising, you have CA 19.9 rising and yet you don't see any listing on CP and knowing the response to chemotherapy. PHCP changes management in 36 it is helpful for differentiation between viability and non viable myocardial ventilation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Satishna, for your nice presentation. Any questions from the audience? Pathological difference between tuberculosis granuloma and other type of granuloma? Uh, I don't think we are only here dealing with the... Uh, uh, small cell cancer or any kind of cancers versus granuloma. We cannot differentiate whether it is a sarcoidosis or tuberculosis. It has to be an histopathological diagnosis. PET CT or any other things, but there are patterns. Patterns in sarcoidosis is you will get what is known as the lambda sign. You know lambda, lambda is that the Greek alphabet in which you have the higher lymph nodes. Similarly, you have what is known as the Ponda sign. Ponda is one of the beer uh, and it gives uptake in the salivary glands. So, these are the classical listing of sarcoidosis. In uh, tuberculosis, you get uh, caseation necrosis and in and around that, you may get inflammatory uptake. There are very, very classical signs of tuberculosis. Uh, which can be seen on CT itself, I think in mo most of most of my radiologically radiology colleagues will be able to touch. So you can make a you can keep everything together. You have to keep the clinical findings, you have to keep the radiological findings, you have to keep the PET C T findings, put everything discuss with your physician. The best thing is, unless you know the clinical findings, all the results should be interpreted with the clinical findings. Then only the interpretation will be useful for changing the clinical management. At present, uh, we are charging around 22,000. But uh, what has happened is we have got the new cyclotron, which has got now only the first run has come in uh, Kamakshi. And the MTG cost, because now we were getting the tracer from Mumbai and Bangalore. Since it has come in Chennai, I think it is going to come to approximately 12,000. So it is going to be a one shop stop. We are going to do a whole body CT from head to the foot, you are going to do a complete contrast, you are going to do a complete, you are going to give a complete oral contrast, you are going to do a complete IV contrast, you are going to scan from the head to everything. So it should be, the main thing is we are all targeting it to make it economically viable, we are trying to make it around 15,000 for the whole PET CT scan. So at present it is 22,000, but 
within maybe a year or so cost will drop. The answer to the question of differentiating effective granulomas is when the more molecular advances come and they are able to get a target molecule which only catch the mycobacterium tuberculosis or which only catch the aspergillosis, that time only we can expect the facility to give the illogical diagnosis. Till that time it is very hazardous. Thank you. 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 One of the presidents of the United States had an Alzheimer's disease while he was on office. It is said that uh, one of Ronald Reagan was having Alzheimer's. So we cannot have these kind of people who can forget everything. So now the second thing is there are molecules which we are trying, there are new uh, monoclonal uh, therapies starting for uh, treatment of Alzheimer's. However, we have a modality to tell. There are other kinds of dementias which are treatable, like multi infarct and other things. So, differentiate between multi infarct and other dementias, you can use a spread CT to know, yes, it is Alzheimer's dementia. So, the branded one is a or some products we have to depend on tissue bias. Yes. Is there any what the trying at 23,000 uh, to know that it is a branded one? It is not a confirmative thing. You are uh, spending money just to isolate a, a, a <coughs> You are not doing it in an add-on investigation. And it is not a confirmative investigation. And you want to spend uh, 20,000. Is there any other uh, mode of uh, You said uh, it's interpreting with the clinical finding and all. Obviously, then, what you are telling, I absolutely agree with you for diagnosis of uh, tuberculosis and this thing, I don't think you need PET CT. But now there have been three or four papers now, the Ball Group and All India Institute is working on this, that now PET CT is being used to monitor therapy, especially in case of bone tuberculosis, that when you are going to stop rifampicin and INS, whether you should stop after five months or you should stop after six months, stop after one year. So what PET CT will help you to do is you do a pre-scan and for the lesions to become metabolically inactive. So to know when to stop the therapy, now we are, it is still an ongoing trial. It has not, uh, it has not come into the market. This is one of the uses. And again to know what are the other sites of involvement. Suppose you are, suppose there are, there are different other kinds of tuberculosis. Now tuberculosis can present in different ways. You can have dominant tuberculosis. You want to just know what are the other sites of like how you do a bone scan? <coughs> you can know that whether there are lung areas, there are lymph nodes, or whether there are other areas of involvement, there are bladder involvement and other things. So in that you can make a one shop stop, you can say yes, these are the other areas which are involved. And what are the type of therapy you're going to tailor for these kind of patients? Yes, you can say you can, you can treat some of the patients really aggressively. Some of the patients you need not treat so aggressively, you can go for a standard regime. There is no standard regime for the kind of extra permanent tuberculosis. So, because this is an ongoing trial, it's not coming to practice, but this could be one of the uses in tuberculosis. Uh, who came to my clinic with uh, body pain, severe body pain. But when he looked at his eyes itself, it was uh, severe anemic fear on five. So when I called, uh, when I told him that he has to undergo test to uh, confirm what is going on, I examined him and I found a uh, little ascites also. So I told the family members, uh, I just gave a uh, prescription of uh, decompress, I sent the patient and I called the son whom I know. I told your father is having some CA, he has to immediately be uh, admitted or investigated at least. Then the next day, the next moment the man told I will take to the hospital where he is undergoing diabetes treatment for past 20 years in Raipuram. So he took there and then the third day he called me, doctor they told that some cancer is there so uh, they need us uh, to send to cancer institute. So in short, after CT in a hospital, uh, the doctor are there, they told me we will go for a PET scan. PET scan report confirmed whatever CT was to, uh, told. The report I read, polylithiasis with chronic polycystitis, polydolithiasis with uh, bilirary dilatation, 
cirrhosis of liver with the multifocal ill defined FTG RV disease in both lobes of liver. The patient needs further evaluation with biopsy and serum and AFP levels. <laughs> Here, my question was if after spending 25,000 rupees and uh, we told the patient that with this scan we will be able to see where the cancer is and uh, whether he needs to be operated or anything. The report came like this. I was very sad because I could not explain anything to the patient. So that is the reason I asked Dr. Rajiv. <laughs> And then go for biopsy and then cancer. So I don't think it is justifiable to make to spend for differentiating the thing. And you said analyzing the diagnosis and for that point I have raised this. No, as the uh, sir was telling, uh, I would just like to tell you the small comment about uh, this thing. That uh, I saw that I didn't get my PET scan done some other center. The CT was, what I saw was the CT which was done. Uh, there are FTG avid lesions in the liver. And there is also an FTG avid lesion in the tail of the pancreas. So obviously it is very, very... Um, it's very, very certain, like you see an FTG avid scan, you see the lesion, it's like it's something like a full scan, you see multiple areas, you see the lesion in the, in the, in the pancreas and you see the lesion in the liver. Obviously it's a stage 4 disease, because obviously you see the lesion in the liver as well as lesion in the back, and, the, and it looks like the primary is in the pancreas, because pancreas, the tail of the pancreas, but we should also uh, <coughs> understand our situation that we cannot give tissue diagnosis for uh, we are not Lord Almighty. The person who gives the tissue diagnosis, the pathologist is the person we can only give a road map to the physicians that there is a lesion in the liver, lesion in the pancreas, there is multiple lesions in the liver, obviously it's a stage 4 disease. The, the, now it can also be pancreatitis with some, it can be some uh, hepatic, uh, hep, uh, hepatic abscess. If somebody says that, but in a clinical this thing, the patient, uh, the, uh, I think the enzyme levels were elevated for this patient. The patient had ascites, the patient was grossly tachexic. You have FDD abbreviations. So I think the best thing is uh, more than anything, we have to interact more and uh, there are a lot of things which a radiologist can tell. Yes, I think it is a stage 4 disease, sir. But a lot of things cannot be written in, uh, in the writing economy because it may become a medical legal problem later on. So, a lot of times uh, I think we should interact more often and uh, we should uh, and we also, we cannot just without seeing a, uh, taking history of the patient or anything, just see the scan and leave the The CT showed almost three lesions. Yes, then they wanted uh, con to confirm what is the problem. That is the reason they took PET scan. Okay. So now patient, we are explaining if the lesion is there in the pancreas, in the, uh, this one, and we can finish with that. With that. But uh, when we say PET scan, we say where is the primary one and whether it is to be operated and then we are sending there. So here also it is only three lesions are there, probably this and probably that. Then a patient will think, why do you this one? The same what doctor has told. So here a PET scan, whether it is, if it is very much indicated, then we can avoid all CT, everything straight away we can go for a PET scan. Once it is diagnosed to be made as cancer or differential diagnosis. Maybe there could have been a 